people discussing the nature of light, are they electromagnetic waves or not? This was the belief of all scientists until 1900, that light, electromagnetic radiation is composed of waves. So until this experiment was done, this experiment is called photoelectric effect. So it was known, it was known by that time that certain metals like alkali, uh, alkaline metals, if you shine light to them, they are going to release electrons. And if you have a positive terminal here, electrons are going to start a current. So negative terminal of this battery is connected to the metal, positive terminal to <clears throat> this uh, electrode here. So if the metal is releasing electron, and this is upon using certain light, then you will see a current here, the meter will show that electron was released by the metal. At the time, this information was known that any wave is directly, the energy of any wave is directly proportional to the intensity of the wave. What is in intensity of a wave? If you think of a wave in ocean, if the height of wave is larger, intensity is larger, amplitude is larger, the energy of the wave is larger. The smaller the height of the wave, the smaller the power of the wave. Now, in this case, when they were using different wavelengths of the light, they noticed that in many wavelengths, there is no electron released. Only at certain wavelengths, electron were released. That means absorption of energy by electrons inside this metal is selective. Electrons decide which wavelengths they have to absorb. So they are getting excited, they are getting lost from their atom and attracted to the positive electrons. So this was astonishing because scientists said, if you are using a wave which is not being absorbed, we can increase the density. That means we are increasing the power of the waves. Then eventually at certain intensity, the electrons must be ejected. That was not observed. So everybody, all scientists at this point is beginning of the 20th century. They say why absorption of energy is selective. Maybe energy is packaged. Maybe light is not waves, it's particle. And this theory was going to help the fact that photoelectric effect happens at certain wavelengths. So of course, the wavelength changed going from one metal into another, but you needed a minimum frequency that a current is observed, that means ejection of electron has happened. So this is a wave behavior, it's not observed in photoelectric phenomena. So they said maybe light is composed of packages of energy. We call them photon. And the energy of photon does not depend on the intensity of the light, but it depends on the wavelength of the light. And of course, wavelength is related to frequency. They said light is composed of packages of energy called photon, energy of photon is a constant, which was called Planck constant, Planck's constant, and times the frequency, which is frequency is related to wavelengths. That means electrons are selective, they look at the wavelengths, all frequency of the incident light, and then they decide to absorb it to get excited. I'm going to give you an example. Suppose you have a cat and you throw, let's say, a lot of vegetables to the cat. 
is not going to be eating that. He needs meat, he needs cat food. So electrons are being selective. They don't like vegetable, but they like meat and certain type of meat. I'm talking about energy, of course. So Planck and Einstein, in order to explain this phenomena of photoelectric, they say, okay, light is composed of particles, particles of energy, and we call that photon. At the same time, as I showed you on previous videos, light is still showing interference. Interference is properties of the waves. So they say, okay, we have to accept both phenomena. Some phenomena, some behavior, some observation of light is explained by particle property like here and interference of the light is explained by light being waves. Now, Planck is also saying that light, absorption of light is quantized. What does that mean? It's packaged. It needs certain package of energy to be absorbed. So, I want to give you the idea of quantization. What is the meaning that absorption of energy is quantized? Release of energy is also quantized. This is classic physics, no quantization. Energy can have any value. That means, suppose there is somebody sitting on a wheelchair and you are pushing that person up the ramp, you can push it to go by one inch. That means you don't use a whole lot of energy or you can, somebody else which is the stronger can push it by one foot and somebody can push it by one yard. So all sorts of energy can be applied and you see change of energy. Of course, wheelchair has more energy at it, as it gets to the top of the ramp. But this is quantum physics. Quantum physics says energy is not continuous like a ramp. It's like a steps, first step, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. It says at, it says at the atomic level, at micro level, what is happening is that either you have enough energy to lift this wheelchair from first step to second, or it wouldn't go. You cannot move it by one inch if the distance between the two steps are six inches. That energy is not enough to get you to second step. There is no step in here. That means you can't move the wheelchair here. Or suppose you have, you're using a, an elevator going from first floor. You can go to second floor third floor, fourth floor, fifth floor. But if you want to stop at floor one and half, there is no door, there is no possibility. It can't happen. So Pla Planck's and later on, Einstein are saying that energy is quantized. <clears throat> if you are giving a package of energy, which is a smaller than this difference, that energy is not going to be absorbed because electrons they don't have any level here, they drop. Only energy packet, which is going to take electron from one level to second level or one level to third level or one level to fourth level or one level to fifth level can happen. In other words, the energy is spacing between the two level of energy for electrons must be equal to the energy of photon. Otherwise the photon is not going to be absorbed. This is showing, again, going back to photoelectric phenomena. So they are using different frequency. They are increasing the frequency. And do you see there is no current? Electron is not ejected. Unless you come to this frequency, which is, has the right amount of energy, energy is absorbed, 
electrons are excited. That means you get more current. That means more electron is ejected. At this frequency, if you increase the intensity of light, yes, you increase the amplitude of the light, you increase the intensity of the light, more electron is produced. So what is really matter is the frequency or wavelength of the light to be right amount. And if the wavelength is not right, doesn't matter how much you increase the brightness of the light. That light is not going to be absorbed. That's why Planck and Einstein said absorption of energy is quantized. Electrons are selective. They only absorb the energy package, which is right amount, which fits a spacing of the energy level. Okay. So this is, you don't have to know this. If you take physics, you probably do this. Uh, it simply says power, which is transmitted by a wave, a swing wave, is proportional with the square of amplitude, which is how high the height of a wave is that directly determines the energy. But in case of light, doesn't matter how much you increase the intensity of the light, that means you're increasing the height of the waves. If the frequency is not right, light is not absorbed. So, this is what Planck is saying. Planck is saying light is composed of packages of energy called photon. Uh, photon. The energy of every photon is this constant, which is called Planck's constant. This is the value of Planck constant times the frequency. So if this is the wavelength of the light which is emitted, it simply shows the spacing between the energy level of electrons and hydrogen. Although hydrogen has got one electron, but there are many spacing. There are many energy level which are not filled. The electrons know where they are supposed to jump. So they know what is the spacing. So they know what sort of photon can provide the right energy so they don't fall from the steps. So Planck was able to actually calculate this constant. And then he was able to explain the line spectrum of hydrogen. And we are going to look at those calculations and you are going to use the same calculation during the next lab that we're dealing with light. Okay. So, 1905, Planck and Einstein. They say light has both wave and particle nature. Dual property of light was accepted. So photons are particle of light and Also light, light waves, they are doing interference. That means you see the pattern of brightness and darkness when two different lights are interfering together. So they are also waves. So one more time, you have line spectrum. It simply shows the spacing between the energy level that electrons is permitted to accept. And this is the line spectrum of different elements that we can identify an element by looking at the line spectrum. They're characteristic. They're exactly like a fingerprint of a person.